Hello. Today I will be discussing Lab 2, titled Motion of a Falling Object. The purpose of this experiment is to observe and model the motion of a falling object in the scope of Newton's second law, considering first only the constant force of gravity, and then second the combined forces of gravity and drag. The net force can be calculated by combining the y component of these two forces, giving us negative mg plus b times the magnitude of velocity squared. Here, m is just mass. G is a constant representing gravity near Earth's surface. B is a proportionality constant for the drag force, depending on the object. And then the last term represents the speed squared. For my observations, I used the app Tracker to record the falling of a paper ball. I set the coordinate axes so that the motion is in the negative y direction. And I shot the video at a consistent 30 frames per second. Looking at the graph data and uh, keeping in mind that the slope of position versus time is velocity, you see that the slope and the velocity is changing with time. This means that the paper ball must be experiencing a net force over time. And specifically towards the end here, we see it almost showing a linear trend, which we'll see is important later on. I use GlowScript to create two different models. The first only considers gravity for the net force. The second one considers gravity and the force of drag. Both use a rearrangement of Newton's second law to update the velocity. However, they differ in their uh, calculation of the updated position. For model one, we have gravity being the only force acting on it and being a constant force. This means that I will calculate the average velocity as the final velocity plus the initial all over two. Rather in contrast, model two, we have the force of drag, which is non constant. So we calculate, or rather, we approximate the average velocity to be about the final velocity. We see this reflected in my code, um, specifically in the while loop. However, for the most part, the code is pretty much the same. The masses are the same, they both have the same initial conditions, or have the position and velocity being equal to the zero vector because the object starts at rest. Um, the big change starts with first the proportionality constant b where it's set to zero for model one because we don't consider drag and it's set to 0 0.003 for model two. Um, for the while loop I have to calculate the average velocity for the first model before um, updating the position and then I also set a uh, a variable initial velocity equal to this final velocity so I can use it in the next iteration of the loop. For model 2 I simply use the final velocity that I calculated in the line above to get the updated position. All right, so when I run the programs one of the biggest differences you see is that the first model has the ball going a much greater distance downward. This is reflected in uh, a difference in their position versus time graph. And then we also see a different tr uh, trend for the velocity versus time that I'll get into momentarily. We can get a graph of position versus time for the observation data and the model data. We see that model one predicts the paper ball to be at a much lower position, just like we saw in the code. Model two, um, however, is pretty accurate to the observed data because model one fails to consider the force of drag and as a result it affects the wrong slope and velocity. To further explore this difference we're going to be looking at the terminal velocity. Terminal velocity occurs when the magnitude of the force of drag is equal to the magnitude of the force of gravity. Since the force of drag and gravity are in opposite directions they end up balancing out giving us a net force of zero. So by Newton's second law, we know that uh, delta v, the change in velocity, must also be zero to satisfy the equation. This is reflected in our velocity graphs. So for model two, which uh, considers the force of drag, we see that eventually the velocity reaches a constant slope, which shows that the delta v is equal to zero. However, in model one, we see that velocity has a uh, consistent negative downward slope. This shows that uh, this is the reason why model two 
shows a much more accurate representation of the motion of the object when compared to Model 1. Now, to wrap things up, let's consider the scenario of throwing the a ball downwards instead of releasing it from rest. Specifically, let's look at how does the terminal velocity change when we start with a non-zero initial velocity. To test this, I simply changed the y coordinate of the initial velocity in my code, which gave me the two figures here. We see that their terminal velocity is equal to the same, so the terminal velocity will not change. However, the time it takes to reach the terminal velocity changed dramatically, with it reaching terminal velocity much faster when the initial velocity was uh, set to negative 3.7. And with that, thanks for watching, and hope you have a great day.